This film is a continuation from the previous video, Singapore version 2.0, which was uploaded on YouTube last year. Um, it is now focused on aging in place. In the video, Singapore version 2, I talked about making Singapore into an intelligent city with every kind of smarts for everyone. And this requires a different way of planning by networking together the currents of everyday life. Living in place, working in place, learning in place, farming in place, and aging in place. And all together forming around a central nervous system, which is the CNS. The CNS is the place where, as Singaporeans go about the routines of their everyday life, they come across new ideas, meet new friends, and make new ones. This way, they break out of the fearful mindset that constrains them. This is the setting for aging in place. This is an example of introducing the central nervous system into a housing estate at Bukit Panjang. This is the situational learning environment that anchors the super school which is along the central nervous system to aging in place, working in place, learning in place. It is open to the world. That is intelligence. That's resilience. That's well-being. That's the future of Singapore. And once the CNSs are inserted into every estate over a period of time and linked together using the park connectors and the various transport systems in Singapore, Singapore actually becomes a brain. This is the future of Singapore. Singapore's future is to be smarter. The central nervous system is where the lifeblood of the people flow. This is where the intelligence of the people can blossom. Here is where the new Singapore is born. Implementing aging in place, we must plan for everyone, starting in our HDB estates, where most people live. After that, then we provide for the well-to-do. For the majority, money is the most important thing. Monetizing the biggest asset of their lives, which is their flat, is the starting point. There should, however, be many different viable choices to suit different circumstances. One, renting out a room. Two, selling out and downgrading to a smaller apartment and capitalizing on the asset. Three, reverse mortgage. These are already provisions available provided by the government. Subdividing for rent or subdividing for sale or both. Monetizing of the existing flat by subdividing it is a project which my student Jonathan Toh has done for his thesis. This is the BTO flats that are under construction right now and this is the site that he chose to investigate the possibility of adaptation and subdivision over a long period of time. So here is the typical five-room apartment and this is how such a five-room flat can be subdivided into three smaller flats, each with its own toilet and kitchen. This is what the existing building will look like from the outside and this is how it might look like once the bathrooms and kitchens are attached on the outside with new structure and new plumbing and electrics added to the existing structure. Of course, there will be additional incremental costs which have to be invested. If, however, HDB plans for such new additions and alterations and the structure and the mechanical and plumbing services are provided beforehand, then the actual incremental cost is much lower. The question that I want to ask you is this, you know, why did you choose to do this thesis okay. about housing? Um, I chose to do this thesis because as a young Singaporean adult, the housing situation, at least in the future for me, it's uh, one of my primary concerns. As I grow older, my house will become my biggest asset uh, and I will still like to live in the same community with my friends and family without having to sell it. So that was what drove me to this project, um, which is to subdivide uh, existing HDB apartment. So by subdividing a HDB apartment, I'm able to occupy uh, a portion of it while subletting or selling the other two parts. Yeah, so that's, that's when you, you, you know, your children will have grown up and correct. have left. So as I grow older and uh, my children grow and they move out, uh, I'm still able to, when I do not need such a big space anymore, I'm able to occupy a smaller portion of my existing unit while renting or selling the other two parts uh, for income. Yeah, yep. very good. I think this is a very important uh, uh, possibility for... Yes for aging in place because Correct. when people uh, get to that stage uh, mm. income and you know from from the from the asset is very important Correct. Right. the next topic which uh, i want to deal with is aging in place without end block of the existing buildings no need to knock it all down my proposal does not need end block it can upgrade add new units age in place keep the community intact 
because the struggle in en bloc decision making is that people have lived there for a long time, they have formed friendships, there is a viable community already in existence. And people want to maintain that relationship in the familiar environment that they live in. But there is a struggle because the economic logic at the age that they are now in, at the old age, they feel this, the necessity to, to sell off. So this economic logic is in contradiction to place value and community value. And I think this can be solved. This is Normanton Park. Aging in place yet benefiting from additional development is possible. First, the plot ratio has already been increased from the existing 1.2 to the new 2.1 which is provided by URA. By inserting a new central nervous system into the blocks, weaving in between the blocks, we can increase the amount of floor space. Many Soho units, even schools, kindergartens and other local workplaces can be introduced into this space, including medical facilities. There are eight existing three-storey blocks. In these eight blocks are only three-storey high. So it's a simple matter of straddling the structure across the three-storey block and add another 10 storeys on top. And with the addition of several low-rise blocks on the edges of the property, it is possible to fulfill the total plot ratio of 2.1 and yet pro provide the kind of amenities and the kind of economic returns to the existing community so that they do not need to move out. So this is what it might look like, a place to work, to live, to farm and to learn in place. This is the extension of the idea of the central nervous system which we developed in the Singapore version 2.0 which was addressing the HDB situation. We can also do this in a private condominium. So this is what it might look like. The rooftop of the central nervous system becomes an elevated parkway. You can rollerblade, you can cycle along it. There are clubhouses, there are all kinds of recreational amenities all within short walking distance from the apartments. The Soho units below, the new apartments that are added to the development will bring in the additional income. In fact, the total asset value of the total development goes up to at least $1.3 billion at a conservative valuation of floor space at $1,000 per square foot. And this is one of the most attractive condominiums in Singapore because it is right next to the Science Park on the left. It is near the university, near the Polytechnic, it is sandwiched by two major hospitals, the National University Hospital and the Alexander Hospital. And it's on the AYE Highway. Right behind the scheme is the Kent Ridge uh, Nature Park. So this is one of the most desirable developments and I will be very sorry to see that it goes en bloc because all the place values and all the community values would be expunged. This is a rotational view of the development. You can see that even with the addition of new floor space and the central nervous system, the spatial amenity, the spatial qualities of the development with the very high degree of vegetation and trees and so on is entirely attractive and it's a wonderful place to live. So no need to demolish. So one of the concerns is the lease. Normanton has got 60 years left. In fact, many of the similar type of developments have a shorter lease period left for it. Now we have 60 years left. The Hillford project recently launched for Retirement Village proves that the 60 year short lease is not a deterrent. It was sold out very quickly. From the land value accruing to the management corporation of the statutory tenants, part of which would finance the upgrading of all the existing flats, because the plumbing, the electrics have to be improved. Some of the quality of the finishes can be upgraded, leaving the community intact and yet enjoying enhanced value plus new amenities will be built in because of the added plot ratio. So it is possible to have the cake and eat it. People can continue to live in these kinds of upgraded uh, condominiums and yet fulfill URA's requirement for fully utilizing the development possibilities of the land. There are also other possibilities which we should also look at and that is infill into existing HDB estates. This is a proposal which me and a few friends uh, propose cottages, small little cottages to be slotted in between uh, the slab blocks uh, on vacant land on the edges of uh, housing estates especially over open car parks. We can build a deck over the car parks and the elderly can either sell off the existing flat or give it to their children and be able to live nearby in very comfortable conditions. So low-cost steel frame retirement cottages in HDB estates is entirely possible. We did a costing of these units which can be fabricated say in Vietnam or China at very much low cost. 
it's possible even to think of uh, such units at 50,000 Singapore dollars per unit with the land costs being minimized. So this is what it will look like. Cottages for the couple, a little picket fence in front, a small garden, a rose garden and a pitch roof, something quite cozy. And if you look at the inside, it's actually only 320 square feet, one bedroom with a living dining space next to it, a front porch and garden with a little ramp so that the, the wheelchair can go upstairs. It is only going up another one foot, a small kitchenette and the bathroom. Very comfortable, easy to maintain, walk in, walk out. By removing the pitch roof, we can slot this uh, type of units into the spaces between tower blocks presently occupied by roads and open car parks. It's possible to have cars parking downstairs and the uh, small cottages on the upper floor. Once we remove the pitch roof, then the blockage of view by the adjacent residents in the slab blocks behind it will be not so obstructed. And the roof itself will be a green roof so that when you look down from the flats, you actually don't see too much concrete. You see a lot of greenery and even be thinking about planting vegetables on the roof. So the green roofs and the heavy planting along the edges, covered car park can actually self-finance because the owners of the cars will be quite willing to pay a bit more for their monthly rental to the HDB and therefore the cost of the concrete slab on which the cottages are sitting can be recovered. Cottages to live and even to work in, in familiar surroundings. This is what people want. When people age, the retirees, they want to live near family and friends. They don't want to move to some new place. This is human factor. Now many questions have been asked about, is there enough land? I think so. If you look at this map, you can see that almost every HDB estate has a perimeter land space which is required to buffer the noise and the sound emanating from the roads around it. So there's about 20 meters of green space in between. Now this space can be recovered and used provided we can cut off the noise. Cutting off the noise is by creating green wall. And the green wall need not be a simple flat looking barrier. It could simulate hills and valleys and so on. And with wonderful planting within our tropical climate is entirely feasible. And all the grey water from the houses will be collected and used to irrigate the plants so that it will be perfectly green. In Holland they have done a lot of this and even in Japan. But the problem there is that in winter all the plants die and it looks very bad or brown. But in Singapore, we can be sure that it will be always green right around the year. So the noise and the dust and the disturbance from the traffic can be totally shielded off. And behind the wall would be these apartments or various other kinds of facilities which are tacked onto the back of the wall. The apartments will look inwards into kind of public green spaces and so on. Caring for the aged infirm at home is a very big issue as the population ages. Nursing of the infirm in their own homes is the ideal solution, both for the infirm as well as social solution as we age. It's best if the nursing is done in their own home, where they are very comfortable and familiar with the place. But how are we going to do it? For seriously ill infirm people, there's no question, you must have high quality nursing homes which are almost like hospitals. The proposal here is that in every housing neighbourhood, there should be a care club. It is a cooperative which will maintain a standby emergency vehicle and manage the nursing team for each neighbourhood cluster. The care club consists of the able-bodied retirees in that neighbourhood. They come together to form the club. They are the nucleus of a new community cohesion that is needed for Singapore inclusive future because they know also eventually they will need to have nursing care so the economics of home nursing care is like this if one live-in trainee nurse is allocated to four families who live nearby plus one retired adult supervisor located in the care club and linked by webcam the cost per family would be very much more affordable and have the reassurance that there is proper surveillance and also that the nurses have to report to the care club who are nearby, who are always on contact, both by the family as well as by the nurses. So nursing homes can also be along the central nervous systems of every housing estate. This is the neutral space because it occupies the kind of land space in between the flats and the main road. So there should be acceptance. And here is a case where in Bukit Panjang, we propose various facilities, not just nursing home, but the nursing homes are combined with shops, with flower shops, with medical facilities nearby, general practitioners, linked to the schools, 
In other words, the nursing home is very much integrated into the life of the community and not some place which is out of sight and out of mind. We don't think that is a good thing for the future of Singapore's treatment of old people. So the central nervous system fulfills many, many functions. On top of that, we will need to have a very large and extensive nursing training school in Singapore. Imagine we can employ 100,000 nurses from Indonesia, Philippines, Myanmar and Sri Lanka. And they serve a three-year term in Singapore in a practicum. They have lectures at the hospitals where they learn the medical techniques, but they actually carry out their practical training in the various neighbourhoods. And that way, we empower them because we will give them a diploma at the end of their term of contract, but at the same time, they service us. So this is a win-win situation. So within the central nervous system, we also should have nursing training schools and also nurses' quarters. So the home care co-op located in the surrounding areas in the neighbourhood could be in the void decks or in low-cost special built clubhouses which I propose can be made from reused shipping containers. This is what it might look like. This is a rather large one but it's an integration between various kinds of functions. The containers are raised up on stilts and various functions can fit into it. There should be a restaurant so that the care club people can have their coffee and their coffee break and meet their friends and so on even as they are providing the kind of supervisory services to the nurses that are employed. And it can also be a rather entertaining place with music and various other kinds of social activities. It could be an arts place, it could be a culture place and so on. So the co-location of many of these functions together will in fact fulfill the design objectives of the central nervous system by bringing together a whole range of different activities which are complement and which stimulate each other. So this is the definition of what a smart intelligence means. Now working in place is a very important component of an aging society. We should work as long as we can, right into our 80s even. But it has to be in a healthy working environment that is conducive to the work that we need to do, where we also can be in contact with workmates which are nearby and so on. So this is a very important thing for our mental health and even for our economy. Because the more productive we can be in the longer term, of each working life, the better it is for our economy and for our national well-being. So working in place and the design for semi-retirees and the housebound. These are the two groups that we have to deal with. This needs new thinking and new pricing policy. So my student has done a thesis on working in place using very low-cost shipping containers clustered in various ingenious ways to form working clusters for older people and as well as for homebound people. This is an example of a small workspace which is electronically connected to the main office in town. This lady who is here looking after her child may well be an important financial analyst for a major multinational company or the stock market or something like that. And yet she can be in this space where she can look after her child and, and so on. So this is a very important design proposal for working in place. And here is a retiree and maybe he's a remiser or an insurance agent and he can look after his dog. He can bring his dog to this workspace. And then all of these people are interlinked together around social spaces, clustered together like this. It's four stories with shops and open spaces in between the blocks, so nobody is isolated. Working at home is fine. In fact, uh, it's very economical, but the isolating effect of it is not entirely desirable over a long-term period. It's better to be able to work in clusters so that you can meet people and you know have a chat, have a break, have a coffee together, whatever. Maintain friendships, develop new friendships and so on. This is a very important aspect of working in place. Uh, here is a man you know, able to walk his dog through the workspace. Unlike an office building in Shenton Way or downtown, here the people meeting each other and swapping stories about their dogs and their hobbies. This is a wonderful way of, of working. Children, old people, animals, and so on. This is the new workplace. And the direct benefit of this is that the total amount of traffic to work generated by going downtown from your housing estates will be greatly reduced. Working at home reduces traffic movement. Working near home reduces the traffic congestion. And so we will have a much easier time in our MRTs, in our trains, and so on and so forth. Road congestion will be somewhat reduced. This is uh, Elisa Tan. She was my student, also just graduated from NUS, and she's done a very interesting scheme, and I'd like her to talk about it. So Elisa, why did you do this scheme? Okay, uh, well, I thought of my uh, parents, especially my father, who is going to retire soon. 
So he wants to continue working at his own pace and he wanted to work in his uh, personalized office. And also my uh, in future when I get married uh, and I have my own children, I hope that I can work in a place where I can bring my kids to work, to work and walk home and lunch with my parents. Yeah, and also to be near to where your, your, your workmates might be in, in the workspace that you choose to work in. Yes, right? That's right. And in a uh, standard office in Singapore, it will be very difficult for you to bring your kid, right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And what about changing nappies and all that kind of stuff? <laughs> you know, it's going to be a problem. So in your own private space, you will have all the privacy you need, right? Yes. And your kid can scream his head off and it's fine. And they can have their independent room at the side, at the, uh, beside the workspace. Yeah, and even some soft toys and even have a rabbit. And the restroom. The restroom, whatever it is, right? And that, that would be wonderful. Thank you so much. Now we address the needs of the upper segment of the aging population, but many of the principles which we will talk about also apply across the board even to the other segments of the population. Because the questions are about affordability, ultimately. About facilities, what kind of facilities? What kind of caring attitudes must we inculcate among the caregivers? It's a values question. What kind of institutions is best to organize the care for the elderly? And what land use zoning that we need to incorporate? And what about co-locating so that there can be some way of internal cost sharing? Elder care has to cater to different needs at different stages of aging. At the early stages, maybe people want to have more independence, but they also need to feel that should they need support, the support is always available at any time as they need. And then finally, they will end up at a stage it becomes a high dependency situation. And that's where medical kind of system and support will become very necessary. So facilities is important, but to facilities must be added the values, the caring attitude and caring behavior of the caregivers. This is extremely important. And Australia has some very good examples, such as the retirement homes are built by Royal Freemasons. It is a non-profit organization in its programs for retirement and elder care. There, retirement homes are non-profit. Many of them are owned and run by benevolent associations and organizations subsidized by government and foundations. In Singapore, probably we will be very concerned about government subsidy because it can be a bottomless pit. My suggestion here is cost sharing through internal cross subsidy, through co-locating with profitable functions to achieve viable economy. That is, for example, if you have a shopping complex which is making money from the rental, it is possible to think of the rooftop being a retirement home and therefore the cost sharing can be achieved. Of course, this needs different zoning rules and town planning regulations and new institutional systems aimed at every level of social affordability, whether it is HDB situation, private housing estates, condominiums, or purpose-built retirement homes. All of these will need to consider the zoning requirements. And so, as we end this whole discussion on aging in place, there has to be, we hope, a national conversation towards a national elder care sustainable system. This is absolutely important. Thank you.